So a young Peter Parker has his final indestructive battle against the secret original goblin, the Proto Goblin. Now, of course, this is AJ here at the Hero Informer, and let's get into it. So Spider Man starts off saving a man in a robbery, but this is a young Peter, a young Peter who is not only angry but fed up because he has been searching the city for hours looking for the kidnapped Harry Osborne. Meaning, even though he is quipping and making jokes like usual, he is not in a mood to stay and play as he swiftly and easily takes on some of the armed robbers, especially one of them as he continues to shoot at Peter. Peter starts to vent a little and going on about criminals in general and guns saying you think the weapons make you powerful important but they just make you pathetic as he takes a gun from the guy and backhands him so hard knocking him out instantly and really he didn't even specifically mean to this guy in particular but just in general because recently at this moment he is still being affected by the death of uncle ben which at this point in time has only happened weeks beforehand and later on towards the end of this comic we even see this come back full circle as we see some of peter's worst fears realized as he finishes cleaning up that robbery and heads back on but as we will soon see with peter going back home his home life is no better as he and his aunt may have currently have a uh, strained relationship after Peter came home one time hurt, beat up, bruised from a previous fight with a giant red proto goblin. So of course you can see how this would affect May after having just lost Ben only weeks prior. Speaking of the red goblin though, we cut over to see him and some woman. And this woman is none other than Emily Osborne, the mother of Harry Osborne and the thought to be deceased wife of Norman Osborne. But of course throughout this entire story, we find out she is very much alive and has even hired Niels Van Ander, this proto goblin, to kidnap and bring her son back to her. And after of course succeeding in doing that, she has another step for the proto goblin goblin because after all of these years being with Norman, Emily has seen the true evil, the true goblin that he is and wanted no parts of it, which of course led to her faking her death and fleeing. But now that she is back, she wants her son back with her and Norman gone. As she tells the proto goblin if he wants the cure to stop his mutation and turning into the creature and beast that he is now and to be human again, he needs to kill Norman Osborn. Back over at the Parker household though, we actually see some making up because we finally see Aunt May and Peter take the time to acknowledge the crazy things that has happened recently, specifically about Uncle Ben of course, with them going over what he meant to them and even shedding tears over the impact Ben has made, growing closer and ultimately cleaning up some of the blockage in their current strained relationship. But even though this is a good thing that all this is happening, it might be all for nothing and go out the window as later on that evening, we see Peter and Aunt May on the couch late night as may drifts asleep we see peter watching the news as he finds out harry still of course being kidnapped but now new to him norman is now in the hospital from a previous attack from the proto goblin so peter as much as he will want to just stay back stay with his aunt he of course knows with great power comes great responsibility as he soups up and swings off seeing what he can do to save this osborne drama and this decision from spider-man norman should be very grateful because as we cut over to the private hospital he is at we see the proto goblin also made his way to norman to finally try to end him the same norman who forced him to take the experimental goblin formula that turned him into the beast he is now taking away his humanity and forcing him to leave and abandon his family so it's not like this proto goblin is going to just try to kill norman for nothing no he definitely has his reasons and motive for doing it separate from what Emily wants. And as he gears up to do it, finally going to take out Norman, with Norman even encouraging him to do it, the insane psychopath that he is. At the end of the day, even though he may look like a monster, Anders in his heart is just a desperate man looking to reunite with his family and was just put in a bad situation as we see him hesitate to take the final attack and end Osborne. With Osborne taking this moment of weakness, even though his life is spared, he takes this moment to mock the proto goblin, telling him that even though with all the extraordinary power the formula may have given him, he is still weak and always has been. But we also see the formula changing him, continuing to mutate him for the worse as he starts to literally almost decompose in a way. Either way though, this is not a good look because as when Spider-Man finally arrives and tracks him down, they immediately get into a little bit of a fight and tussle because in all of this spider-man is oblivious to the fact that norman osborne is the true monster in all of this chaos now yes even though the uh, proto goblin isn't at no fault he still has done his fair share of wrongs he's in no way shape or form the true monster in this room and with the red goblin jumping tossing spider-man out of the building landing on him on the streets down below we see things get even crazier because from spider-man's perspective he goes on to say when he came at me i caught a glimpse the agony on his face the way his body was pulsating and oozing, transforming. Now, of course, that was strange enough, but then things got considerably stranger. As for whatever reason, Peter starts having some sort of vision, a vision back into the day that 
changed everything. And the day Uncle Ben died, with Aunt May screaming for Peter to do something. Don't let Ben die again. Because in Peter's perspective, one minute he was battling the Red Goblin in Manhattan, New York. And then the next, he was lost in a nightmare. It has been less than a month than Ben Parker was murdered by the burglar. So how could his uncle possibly be alive? And how did he suddenly find himself in his living room in Queens, reliving the worst tragedy of his entire life? But whether this moment is real or not, Spider-Man seemingly has a second chance. Maybe a chance with fully realizing his great power to do something, to stop this. Peter going on to think, in that moment there was no time for questions. He had to save Uncle Ben. No matter how desperately he tried to move, he just couldn't. All he could do was sit there and watch. Relive the exact moment, the horror that changed his entire life and trajectory going forward for a second time. Because even though this is obviously all happening in Peter's head, it brings up some true guilt, remorse, and feelings that he kept deep down to the surface. Because as this nightmare May goes on to say, Peter did this. He had a chance to stop the burglar, but he did nothing and stood there. He let that monster get away. And how this is Peter's fault. Yes, someone else may have pulled the trigger, but Peter could have stopped it. He, in a sense, killed his Uncle Ben. As we see from Peter's perspective in this hallucination or nightmare, whatever you want to call it, Aunt May starts wailing on him, beating him left and right. It was as if with every blow, more guilt, more shame came roaring to the surface. But even as that was happening, a part of Peter understood something was terribly wrong. Yeah, his feelings may have been real in this, but this wasn't reality. As Peter finally snaps out of that little hallucination and sees what's really going on. And just how badly the proto-goblin is detransforming, breaking down. The formula is mutating him to a disgustingly and disfigured amount. His body was literally in a state of degenerative metamorphosis. And as his body was degenerating, it released some sort of pheromone, which of course induced Peter into his hallucination state. But Spider-Man's suffering was nothing compared to the proto-goblins, especially compared to everything that he has also been through recently. He has been not only a guinea pig for Osborn, in his formula, but he became unstable, tearing himself apart from the inside out. The poor man lost his family, his humanity, and now he was in danger of even losing his own life. But of course, in the moment, Spider-Man has to track him down, because even though he might not be the uh, biggest villain or bad guy in the story, he's still a giant red super strong sludge monster that Spider-Man has to at least try to take care of as the proto-goblin tries to get away with Spider-Man following shortly after him. And of course, back over with Norman, we did see that he was alerted to Emily being alive and being behind sending the proto-goblin after him. So Norman then tracks her down. As we pick up in some cabin in the woods where Emily Osborne and Harry Osborne were, and with Norman finally arriving, he came prepared to end this entire drama once and for all by ending Emily. Because before she faked her death, Norman decides to make that death a reality, literally pulling out a gun, saying, Harry, she abandoned us, tricked us into thinking she was dead. Let's make sure she stays that way. And obviously with Harry not being on the same page as watching his mother die in front of him, he tells Norman to stop. And almost like a switch in Norman's head, flickering over from Norman Osborn and the goblin persona, he goes from evil maniac pulling a gun on his previous wife in front of their son to not being able to do it in an instant, dropping the gun and letting her go free. And as Emily goes to leave, she tries to get Harry to go with her. But unfortunately, with Harry being his father's son, he blows up in her face telling her to go. And just like that, she does. She leaves finally out of the lives of the Osborne father and son. And of course, with Norman Osborne not wanting Harry to relive and remember this entire situation, he gasses him with a chemical to make him forget. Forgetting everything that happened and in Harry's perspective, he still thinks his mother is dead. All of this happening while Spider-Man is still fresh on the chase of the Proto-Goblin, tracking him upstate because the Proto-Goblin is trying to make his way to the Osborne cabin where all that drama just unfolded to get the antidote to stop himself from literally decomposing in dying. Which of course, it doesn't take Spider-Man long to find and track him because he has just been following the reports of a red-skinned abomination. And that's the good news. The bad news on the other hand, the proto-goblin's physical transformation has made him, well, deformed and uglier, but also stronger than ever. And some more good news, that means Spider-Man doesn't have to hold back. Because his proto-goblin is, well, super strong, Spider-Man can hit him with a little more force than he would a normal person. And of course, with Peter still being only 15 years old and relatively new to this superhero business, he is powerful but still kind of reckless. As he web swings over, kicking the proto-goblin hard into a side of a bus, he did with so much force that it literally topples the bus over, making it crash off the rail and off a cliff. But Spider-Man, reacting fast enough, is able to save everyone from, well, technically his own actions. But still, he is able to 
just save everyone, and even says himself it's a miracle, that he didn't do even more damage. And of course, when the police arrive, they don't see it that way and try to arrest Spider-Man, but he swings off to go and find wherever the Red Goblin went, because the Proto Goblin has found one of the targets he was looking for, Emily Osborn, as she was driving away from the Osborn cabin. And after catching up and stopping her car, he then tells her that he just couldn't do it. He's not going to kill Norman Osborn. He may look like a monster, but he is not a murderer. But he still does threaten Emily to give him the cure because he is literally decomposing and disintegrating on the spot. But it seems things just keep getting more tragic for this prototype goblin as Emily Osborn goes on to reveal that she can't give him the antidote because there isn't one. She lied. She lied to get her son back which she ended up losing him anyway, and how after all, she truly is Justin Osborne. Meaning with no cure, Proto Goblin is fated to die, fated to continue to lose himself and his wife and children that he previously had. But in that moment, Spider-Man finally catches up and arrives back onto the battle, because even though he didn't hear their conversation, he was following the uh, cellular degeneration pieces that was laid on the ground. And of course, when he found him, it looked like he was about to attack this innocent woman he has never seen before. But even then, an almost outsider in this entire situation, Spider-Man could see how much suffering he was going through, and something about him broke his heart. As the Proto-Goblin continues to get worse and worse, running, screaming off into the woods, as he lives out his final moments as he continues to disintegrate. With Spider-Man swinging shortly behind him, and his own perspective he goes on to say, he searched the woods for hours, but there was just no trace of him. What happened to him? Where could he have even gone? Because as we find out, Van Ander, the proto-goblin, didn't have a happy ending. No, in that forest, he literally kept degrading until he was nothing but a pile of cells, goop on the forest ground, as a team of Oscorp agents come and clean him up, contain him, and throw away the remains, with Peter never actually discovering what happened to him for a very long time. But of course, there's not much a 15-year-old Peter Parker could do in this type of nuanced situation. So picking up the next day, as we see he did go home, we see Aunt May deciding to try a new leaf, if you will, surprising Peter with breakfast in bed and trying to mend their previously strained relationship off on a good note. Because as future Peter goes on to narrate, and yes, this entire story was some sort of retelling with a future Peter Parker reliving, if you will, his past events and telling it from a different perspective. Because he goes on to say, even after all of this time, it is still hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that May Parker is gone. But she's not really gone, is she? She's with me every day. Her voice along with Uncle Ben's encouraging me, guiding me. I wouldn't be the husband, the father, the man I am today if not for them, and I will hold them in my heart forever. As of course the comic ends setting up the future and more iconic stories within the Spider-Man mythos and timeline. But of course this adventure here, retelling what happened with the original Proto Goblin in his entire situation, and just casting more light on the Osborns in general, and just how twisted, nuanced, and evil everything is from top down. But if you have enjoyed this entire series, leave a like or subscribe if you're new and want to see more content like this. As of course, this is the Hero Informer, and thank you for watching.